Hey there everyone, welcome back to the channel, where today, unfortunately, I won't be having ladder up because the way that things shaked out this weekend with going to Athens Regionals, uh, I didn't get a chance to record, and the battle spot ladder actually resets tonight, so I'll be recording stuff probably after that. Anyways, bring you some new team with the new rating season and all that fun stuff, but for now, I actually am able to show you my last match from the regional because the boxes were locked, I couldn't get all the battle videos, but my box is still locked, and one of the things you can do is watch your your, your very last or previous video. Oh my god, I'm so tired. I literally just got in like, not too long ago from the airport. Um, but so my opponent in this last round, at this point, I was uh, six and two. No, sorry, uh, five and three. Hoping to go six and three. A uh, little background: uh, I had two pretty good losses in the tournament, and my third loss, I went, I ended up going six and three. But my third loss in round eight was just it was to Sandville Garchomp, and it was so demoralizing because it wasn't like anything that i can control like like i predicted his plays and i i thought i played well but just missed ice beams when i needed them missed like this move missed that move i just could not hit the garchomp in either game so anyways this game is basically just like all right i win this game i get some points if not i just go home crying and my opponent's team it's actually pretty interesting um you can't see on the screen but it was a pelipper gold duck tapu koko toga Demaru, kartana and porygon 2 now, in, in the first two games, I'd already figured out that the uh, gold duck was water, Waterium Z, which, you know, you should expect. And also that the, um, what's it, who's it? Uh, the Kartana was a salt vest. I hadn't seen the Togedomaru or the Porygon 2. And the, the gold duck had a hidden power grass. So I was worried in this game. Like, I, I played too defensively in, in the other two games, even though I won one. You'll see I obviously won this game. But um, So I decided, you know what? I figured out that uh, his Hidden Power Grass did exactly three-fourths, or like about three-fourths to my uh, Gastrodon, enough to activate its berry. So I actually ended up, I decided he's going to go double duck again. I just decided I'm going to lead Kartana Gastrodon into it, so force him to go Hidden Power Grass, so that way I can knock out the Gold Duck. That was my plan turn one, and I thought, you know, he might get a Tailwind, but at least I can just, you know, I can break the Focus Sash on the Pelipper, he'll get a Tailwind, I can kind of play around it, but I basically, I baited him into doing this. Because I needed to get rid of the Gold Duck. The Gold Duck was a problem for the rest of my team. Because even though I have Gastrodon, the fact that it has Hidden Power Grass is annoying. So I can take one Hidden Power Grass, activate my Eye of Berry, and knock it out. And that's exactly what I do here. And you will see that my opponent does go for a Tailwind. And that, believe me, that critical hit doesn't matter. I mean, it's a Kartana. And that's a Duck. That's a Wet Duck. But I do get the plus one boost, which is super nice. And he gets the Tailwind up. So that part's not, that's not chill at all. So I, I get a sludge bomb off. I'm hoping for like maybe just uh, just enough damage to break the sash. Uh, maybe a poison would be cool. But then he brings in top of Coco, and here, top of Coco comes in. You know, oh, it's gonna activate its uh, surge. I'll give it a second. I had learned previously in the matches that the top of Coco uh, was Life Orb it had Dazzling Gleam, Thunder, Protect, and something else. I'm, I'm I don't really know what the other move was. I imagine it's probably Discharge. He probably didn't want to go for it here because he hadn't brought Togo tomorrow at all. And I didn't expect him to bring it. Um, so here I thought my options are um, I could stay in with Gastrodon. But he could Dazzling Gleam Hurricane and I don't know if I could take that. And I was expecting him to target the Gastrodon that way. So I thought to myself, you know, I can take I can take those moves with Muck. Or sorry, I... I, I it, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry so tired i'm stumbling over my words here um so my plan here was even if he wants to dazzling gleam hurricane i know that kartana can take those attacks because i saw i saw it do it before and i'm at plus one i know plus one leaf blade will knock out the tapu coco the tapu coco is a big threat once i get rid of that i have a uh, i have a bigger uh, a better chance against the rest of his team and uh i honestly thought that he was gonna just dazzling gleam uh, and hurricane into, into kartana and so i wanted to get Nine tails in to try and uh, get rid of the the the, uh, the rain, uh, reduce the chance of the hurricane going off, and then uh, you know just get get a little bit of chip damage on the on the top of Coco, and then put me in a better position for the next turn. Because if I knock out top of Coco here, and I keep you know a little just a little bit of damage on Nine Tails, I I, I can I can deal with whatever's in the back pretty well. Uh, he does. He goes for a Dazzling Gleam, and he does go for a Hurricane. So I did predict this play. I'm not just saying that after the fact. I get confusion. And I'm thinking here, you know, what, what's going to happen here, I wonder? I've had pretty 
bad luck all day. Do you think Cartana is going to hit itself in confusion? I don't know. Why would I pause the video if it didn't hit itself in confusion? So his top of Coco is still around, which is problematic. At this point, I'm like, uh, okay. Guess I gotta. I guess I, I, my best bet's probably just get Gastron in here, prevent the Pelipper from going for any water moves. So basically, the Pelipper, you know, has to switch out. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I don't want to let the Pelipper just switch out. You know, pick up the knockout on the top of Coco because I'm going to sludge bomb the top of Coco, and then he'll get the Pelipper in for free and be able to just, you know, do whatever it wants, like hit all of its hurricanes. I don't want that. So actually my play here was to double nine tails out. Usually you don't switch in nine tails on attacks. And then usually if you do switch it in, you let it do stuff. I thought here like, you know, a an Aurora Veil might be good, but I can't just let nine tails go down to a top of Coco attack. So I thought, you know, even with the electric terrain, Muck can take any attack that this thing wants to throw at me. And then I can knock out. So he does switch out like I predict into the Cartana, which is a little annoying. But as long as I can pick up the knockout here on the top of Coco with Gastrodon, I'm, I'm, feeling pretty, I'm feeling pretty good. So this is a little bit of an awkward play for me, but it ends up working out. And so the top of Coco goes for a Thunder, which hits in the hail, even though it's only 70% accurate, and also crits my Muck, which can take that attack and heal back all the damage with its berry. So already, <laughs> I'm having a great time. But, you know, Sludge Bomb Gastrodon knocks out the top of Coco, and... That, believe me, that critical hit also didn't matter. I saw Gastrodon take that KO several times during the day. Uh, put it to you this way, like every single type of Coco I saw except for one, I think was Life Orb. And but once they get like one or two rounds of Life Orb recoil, Gastrodon picks them all up. It's, it's such a good probability. And you, you, like, you, you two-shot pretty much all top of Coco, even even if they're like super bulky, like Ray Rezos, I think you, you might be able to two shot. And the, and the poison chance helps too. But yeah, so, so things are kind of bad right now. Because you see you see my Ninetales right there, it's health bar. It's, uh, it doesn't have its focus sash, so it can take a hurricane. It can't be scalded because of Gastrodon on the field. But Cartana obviously threatens Ninetales with a smart strike, and it threatens Gastrodon with a leaf blade. And there's one turn of Tailwind left. So, really, the play here is, all right, either one of my Pokemon can win this game. One of them is going to get knocked out, probably, because I can't, I can't protect Gastrodon. I, first of all, I can't protect my Ninetales at all because it doesn't have to protect, but I can't protect Gastrodon because if I do and Cartana just smart strikes into Ninetales, I've lost the game. So I have to pick up a knockout somehow. I either Ice, I, I either ice Beam to knock out the uh, Cartana, or I, you know, I Blizzard to um, knock, knock out, or get damage on the Cortana, knock out the Pelipper. So a Blizzard goes off, then basically, so the situation is, his best play, honestly, is to just target down Gastrodon with a Leaf Blade and uh, Hurricane the Ninetales. That's his best play. And my best play is to just double into the Cortana, because I know it can't protect, I know it's a Salt Vest. And, uh... If he knocks out nine tails, it's bad. But he doesn't know that I don't have protect on nine tails. He, I never showed him that. Um, so he's actually never seen Blizzard. He's seen Encore and Freeze Dry. He's never actually seen Blizzard, and he's not seen Protect. So, he, or sorry, no, he, he yeah, he, I, ne I don't think I used Aurora Veil against him. So I've got, I, I've got Aurora Veil, Blizzard, Encore, Freeze Dry, no Protect. He, has, he doesn't know that though, so he's got to be worried about Ninetales protecting. So I, my play here is I, I have to double in the Cartana. And, uh, you know, worst case scenario, it comes down to uh, I have to win a speed tie against the Cartana. So the Cartana goes for a Leaf Blade into Gastrodon. You know, protecting there, I could have gotten fancy. If I protected there, I, I would have definitely guaranteed a win. Uh, but, you know, that's not a risk I was willing to take. So basically, I, I took what I thought was the best play. Nine Tails avoids the hurricane as it should. I get the Blizzard off, you know, takes out the Pelipper, which is nice. And I see it's a two shot on the on the Cartana, even with the uh, you know with, with the double target damage. And also, I forgot to mention before, but I did I did know because just from checking the in game thing, I knew that Tailwind was petering out. So it wasn't that the Cartana was just going to. You know, it was going to outright outspeed me. I knew that it was going to come down to a speed time, most likely. And so at this point, I have, like, the round before this, I had been, 
I have been hacked out so hard, and I'm not usually one to complain about hacks, but literally the only reason I lost the, those those two games in that round was because I just couldn't hit the Garchomp in, with the Sandville Garchomp. So stupid. Anyways, so this here is just, it's a speed tie. It's a speed tie, and I, I, I hate games coming into speed ties, and it is my fault, kind of, I guess, for letting my Muck get crit. And it is kind of my fault also for letting my Kartana get confused like that. Um, if I was running Protect Kartana, that wouldn't be a problem. But if I was running Protect Kartana, I'd have Focus Sash and Focus Sash Kartana and Ninetales don't go together like that. Um, you really can't run um, Kartana next to Ninetales unless it's Assault Vest. Anyways, I have to Blizzard. He has to Smart Strike. And thank God I hit the Blizzard. So, you know, I finished 6 and 3. I think I finished 57th overall. I had some people drop. It wasn't the best. Um, you know, I probably wouldn't have top cut anyways, even if I had gone 7-2, just because my resistance wasn't great. But it still would have been nice. I would have got a lot more points. I got 30 points. It's no big deal, especially since I'm not trying to qualify. I was just there for fun. And I had a great I had a great weekend, though, with friends. I talked to a lot of people. You know, I, I had some social experiences with people that I normally wouldn't, which I was very happy about. Um... And just all in all, I, a really great time. Uh, you know, shout out to everyone that I talked to that was there. A couple people actually recognized me, you know, from YouTube, which I was surprised about because they're not like a big channel at all. And uh, yeah, but that, I mean, that was cool. And I had, you know, some really, just really nice connections with people this weekend. And uh, I, I'm glad, I'm glad that I got to go. I'm glad that I went. I'm glad that at the people that did go went. I, there were certain people that weren't there that I missed. And uh, yeah. Yeah, all in all, a great experience, and it's one of the reasons why I think if you guys, if you haven't gone to like a, if you haven't gone to like a local tournament yet, or like a regional, or a PC, or a midseason, or anything, if you have one new, just just go. Even if you don't do well, it's so much fun, and usually the people are really nice. Some of the people I I, I don't care for, but um, most like ninety five percent of people I I really like. So, anyways, that's it today, guys. Sorry to ramble. I just I you know just want wanted to say some things and. I've got a ladder up coming back for you on the channel and hopefully have some fun with some fun teams and while we climb the ladder back from 1500 and yeah, I hope to see you guys soon for, for another episode of Ladder Up.